Everybody wants to go fast. Let's look at how we can make your database workloads faster coming up on Tales from the Field. Three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time making it over to Tales from the Field, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. We have videos that come out every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday are our live shows. Tuesday, we have someone from Microsoft or the Azure Data community, and we interview and we play a little bit of a game. On Wednesday, we have our MS Tech Bits, and we drop those. This is one of those that you're watching right now. And on Thursday, we have our Community Roundup, where we feature great videos and articles and blogs by the Azure Data community about all Azure Data products, maybe even featuring your content. Now, let's go on to what we're here to talk about. IOPS are critical to any database workload. IOPS stand for input outputs. Basically, these are our read and our write operations that occur on a database. If we're reading data over and over again, then what we need is going to be a little bit different than if we're writing data over and over again. Write intensive workloads tend to be very heavy IOP workloads. So what we're going to talk about, I'm going to use HammerDB. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll walk through installing HammerDB and then running it. And then I'm going to show you how we can up our performance in a pretty simple way just by increasing the data file size and the log file size on Azure SQL Manage Instance. Azure SQL Manage Instance runs on premium SSDs underneath the cover. So one of the key things we need to understand is the IOPS speed. We're going to be looking at the P10 to P50s and specifically the provisioned IOPS disk and the provisioned throughput per disk. As you can see, as the size increases of the underlying file, so does our speed. That's key. So I'm going to go to hammerdb.com and I'm going to download the release for the Windows installer. Once that downloads, I'm going to open up the file and we're going to step through the installer. Pretty simple. We're just going to accept all the defaults, accept the agreement, click next. And then we're going to go ahead and let this install. Fairly lightweight tool, so this is going to install pretty quick. And once it completes, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, open up the readme, open up the um, HammerDB application right away. Let's go ahead and click finish. The readme comes up. HammerDB begins to load. We close that, the readme really quick. And as a HammerDB is loading, one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go under options. And we're going to need to select that we want to do uh, a benchmark. Uh, the benchmark specifically will let us be able to pick our database engine. We're going to leave it at the uh, TPC because that's a very heavy IOPS intensive workload. And now what we're going to do is we're going to expand the TCP test that we're going to create. Um, we're going to go under schema because we need to build the database first. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in our information. I've already put in my information for my Azure SQL Manage instance. If you're putting this in, you'll put it in from scratch. You want to make sure if you've got a public IP uh, to be able to reference that public port uh, associated with it. We're going to leave encryption and trusted certificate server on. For the ODBC driver, make sure you've got the ODBC driver installed on your local area where you're running HammerDB. I want to do this on a VM in the same region as my Azure SQL Manage instance. After that's finished, I'm going to click build. This is going to kick off. This will run for a while. But once this starts, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to create the database. So we can go over to SQL Server Management Studio and we can take a look at this and we'll be able to actually see the database has been created. And then we can also go and check the process. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. So here I am in my managed instance. I'm just going to do something really simple right now. Just refresh the database and boom, I see it. The TCPP database is there and I named it TPCC underscore 0808 for the number of warehouses we're doing. Now that it's finished, I fast forward in time a little bit. Now that it's finished, you can see my status has all these green little check boxes. This will run for a little while, depending on the size and the speed and the IOPS you're getting. I can now head over to Management Studio and I can take a look at one of the standard built-in reports, top table usage, and I can see exactly how many rows are in my tables. Now that I have this, I'm actually good to go to begin running our test. 
So now we're going to run our workload in HammerDB. We're going to start off by going back to virtual users and we need to select and create some virtual users in order to create a driver script. We want the virtual users to be 96 and then the user delay is zero, repeat delay is zero, uh, iterations we're just going to leave as one and then I want to uncheck show output because that will slow down the overall transactions. So now if I check next to my driver script, I have one. I can go to load. We've already set our options previously when we created our database. I'm going to click start, and then I'm going to click on the transaction counter after this starts to warm up for a bit. I want it to warm up. I want to get the workload going. I want to make sure that the users are active. And then we hit the transaction counter. And if we hit it too early, we'll wait. But as I can see, we've already got some transactions coming in. 1,182. Not a lot of transactions per minute takes 60 seconds. Remember, this is going to be a per minute rating. Uh, now we're up to 6,000. We get an initial ramp up that's a little bit high, and then it will kind of curve down. So that's when you typically start out one of these. So there, I can see we're at 3,498. We've come down a little bit. So probably the 4,000, 5,000 range is going to be where our transactions per minute are right now. And here we get another reading at about 4,100. Now it's time for us to go over to our SQL Server Management Studio. And let's take a look at these file sizes. As we said, the file sizes control the IOPS. And you can see that our data and our log file are both under a gigabyte in size. So we're at the lowest level that we could possibly get at. I'm using the QPI uh, scripts from Jovan Popovic. And I'm going to run my snapshots. And then I'm going to take a look at my weight stats. And I can see that my leading weight stats is my write log weight stat uh, for my transaction log. And what this means is this is just indicative of the weight stats. It means that I've got a heavy write workload. And as I refresh this, you can see I'm getting more and more write log weights. And if we look at the latency, interestingly enough, we our main latency is on our data file. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do, even though our number one state weight stat is with our log, because our latency is with our data, we're going to increase the file size of our data file. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase that file size so that way we can get some additional IOPS located on it. It takes a little while for the data file script to run. So keep in mind if you're running this on a system, uh, and it may, will also make our transactions go down. You don't want to do this when you're in your active production workload. This is a good thing for a test database. So you can see it flattened out while it was growing that. And immediately I'm getting the spike. But you can see now I'm immediately getting more transactions per second. So I'm up to 27,114, 28,000. So this is a big increase, right? We're at 4x times the performance. And all we did was increase the size of our data file. So as this continues to go, what we'll end up doing is we're going to go back and we're going to take a look now um, in SSMS. We're going to go back and we're going to look at these statistics. And, oh, this is continuing to rise, 37,260 uh, transactions per minute. This is good performance. Let's hold here. Oh, 53,000. So look, we're almost at 10x from our initial peak of where we were, a little less than that, about 8 or 9x. That's still really, really good. And now we flatten out 41,000 transactions per minute. So as I was saying, let's come back here. Let's take a look. Let's rerun our uh, snapshots. And then we want to look at our weight stats again. And it continues to be our right log weight stat. That is our number one weight stat. And for this, typically what you would do is you would add more physical files. But what we're going to do, or a faster physical disk, is we're going to increase the size. And that gets us to the same thing. And you can see there's my log file. Now my latency is on that log file. So what we'll do is we will go over and we will uh, now increase the size of our transaction log file. This is going to take, oh no, this ran surprisingly fast. So our transaction log is already updated. Let's go take a look at HammerDB. Bam, we can see that we've got another increase. We're at 96,000 transactions per minute. Um, and I would expect 146. I would expect that this would continue to go up. Um, and now we're well over, you know, a 10x workload of by just increasing the size of our data file and our log file. Really, really key to understand how this can affect our performance on a SQL managed instance on general purpose. Uh, the key to this is general purpose. Because on business critical, you're going to get an optimized uh, pathway channel right off the bat. 
We just covered a lot. Have any questions? Can I help you with anything? Sound off in the comments below. Let me know that you liked what you're seeing or if there's any content that you'd like us to be able to cover. We just covered general purpose and why it is important to understand how those IOPS for the file size, the data and the log can matter and can result in over 10x performance increases just by increasing that size. Also important to note, this does not matter for business critical. Business critical has an optimized pathway to the underlying file storage and that allows for those faster IOPS speeds regardless of size. You're paying a little bit extra for that, but that's one of those added benefits that you get for business critical. All right, until next time, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day.